in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon thankful for all the blessings. We're thankful that you gave Sister Dion travelling mercies back from Jamaica. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with her as she breaks the bread of life today. Pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit, that we all may be filled and brought close to you. In Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Linda, Sister Linda and Arlene, I have a song to sing. Oh, am I allowed to sing a song? She's talking on me. Yes, that'd be very nice. Yes, thank you. Okay. Tell me when I should start. Yes, you can start now. Yes, thank you. I thought number one would surely be me. I could be what I wanted to be. I thought of myself as a mighty big woman, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain is too high and the valley is too wide. Down on my knees, I've learned to stay. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank God, I've made Jesus my all in all. From now on, on his name, I'm surely going to call. And if I don't trust him, I'll be less than a woman. Because I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain is too high and the valley is too wide. Down on my knees, I've learned to stay. I can't even walk. Without you holding my hand, I can't even walk. Without you holding my hand, the mountain is too high and the valley is too wide. Down on my knees, I've learned to stay. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Amen. 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 Thank you for the song and welcome everyone. We're going to hand over to Sister, Sister Dion now. She just come back from Jamaica, got home last night, so um, she's... Um, Welcome now to take the message for us. Thank you. Blessed afternoon to each and every one. Um, today I am here and I praise God for traveling mercies. But I'm back in the UK. I pray that each and every one will be blessed. I'm just going to say a short word of prayer. Um, so let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as in, in, it is in heaven. Lord, as we come before you this afternoon to give you the honor and the praise, we ask that you will, first of all, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do and that you continue to do for us. 
We ask you, dear Lord, that you will forgive us for where we've fallen short in our words and thoughts and deeds. And dear Lord, we ask that you will help us to do better. Dear Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be with each and every one of us. Lord, touch us with your Holy Spirit, for without your Spirit, we can do nothing. And Lord, I'm asking you to touch my lips, Lord. Let it be not be my words, but let it be your words. May you speak through me so that your people may be blessed on this wonderful um, afternoon. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So um, what I'm going to talk about is um, walking in Christ. The scripture reading that I'm going to read is, um, is taken from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. And it reads, <clears throat> walk in love. Sorry. As ye therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Walk in love as Christ has also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Obedience to the law of God is sanctification. There are many who have erroneous ideas in regard to this work in the soul, but Jesus prayed that his disciples might be sanctified through the truth. And added, thy word is truth. Sanctification is not an instantaneous, but a progressive work, as obedience is continuous. Just as long as Satan urges his temptation upon us, the battle of self-conquest will have to be fought over and over again. But by obedience, the truth will sanctify the soul. Those who are loyal to the truth will through the merits of Christ overcome all weakness of character, which has led them to be molded by every varying circumstances of life. Many have taken to be the position that they cannot sin because they are sanctified, but this is a delusive snare of the evil one. There is, a, there is constant danger of falling into sin, for Christ has warned us to watch and pray, lest we enter into temptation. If we are conscious of the weakness of self, we shall not be self-confident and reckless of danger, but we shall feel the necessity of seeking to the source of our strength, Jesus, our righteousness. We shall come in repentance and contrition with the despairing sense of our finite weakness and learn that we must daily apply to the merits of the blood of Christ, that we may become vessels fit for the master's use. Whilst thou art depending upon God, we should not be found warring against the truth, but we should always be enabled to take our stand for the right, stand for the right. We should cling to the teaching of the Bible and not to follow the customs and traditions of the world by saying and doing of humanity. When errors arise and are taught as Bible truth, those who have a connection with Christ will not trust to what the ministers say, but like the noble Bereans, they will search the scripture daily to see if these things are so. When they discover what is in the word of the Lord, they will take their stand on the side of truth. They will hear the voice of the true shepherd saying, this is the way, walk ye in this. Thus you will be educated, my brothers and sisters, thus you'll be educated to make the Bible the man of your counsel. And the voice of the stranger you will neither hear nor follow. In John chapter 10, verse 27 and verse 28, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. In John chapter 10, verse 14 and 27 and 28, it says, 
I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I follow them and they follow me. And verse 8, it says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What a great shepherd we have. What a wonderful shepherd we have. Now I say walk in Christ. I say walk in the life. For Christ is life. First John chapter 1, 7. To walk in the light means to resolve, to exercise, thought, to exert will, power in an earnest endeavor to represent Christ in sweetness of character. It means to put away all gloom. You are not to rest, satisfied, suited by saying, I am a child of the King. Are you beholding Jesus? And by beholding, becoming chance into his likeness, to walk in his light means advancement and progress in spiritual attainment. Paul declared, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but forgetting those things which are behind is in verse behind, constantly beholding the pattern. I reach forth unto those things which are before me. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. To walk in the light means to walk upright and to walk in the way of the Lord, to walk by faith, to walk in the spirit, to walk in the truth, to walk in love, to walk in newness of light. It is perfect holiness in the fear of God. Talk in faith and your faith will increase. Cease lamenting, work in Christ's lines with loving and enduring strive to please him. His excellency will help you to be Christ-like, ever standing ready to lift up your hands that hang down and to strengthen the feeble knees shine as light in the world, attracting other by the brightness of Christ's glory, revealed through your good work. Walk in Christ. I've come to the end of the reading. So this, where I sought this information from, is of course from Spirit of Prophecy. And it's, it's from the Letters and Manuscript, Volume 7, Verse 9, um, Volume 17. Um, year 1907 it is a short reading but i pray that you're blessed by this reading let us continue to walk in christ amen amen amen, amen. thank you for the reading amen uh, anybody got any thoughts we all need to walk in christ and that's the only way a christian can be a christian is to walk in christ um, any thoughts, anyone? Anything that stood out for you? Helen White says that sanctification is the work of a lifetime, meaning true. that it's a, not a one-time act, like justification. When we come to Christ, accept him as our personal saviour, asking for forgiveness and cleansing, uh, which he promises to do, um, but um, we need to constantly be fighting uh, against sin and temptation that comes uh, in our lives. Um, and uh, um, we can only do that by growing in grace day by day, which is what sanctification is. Um, and, and it's about learning to trust Jesus um, and to follow uh, what he says and um you know like it says in psalms a righteous man falls seven times well why does he fall seven times it's because he keeps getting up not just that he keeps getting up jesus keeps lifting him up Amen. jesus is the only one who can lift us above sin and we need to come to him every day uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and throughout the day asking him to help us and that's what sanctification is about it's about a growing process of coming closer mm -hmm. to Jesus and being more obedient to him day by day mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you for that reading sister thank, yeah, you. thank, yeah, thank you for those thoughts it's true it's, it's an uphill battle but Christ is on our side and um, mm -hmm. we stay close to him 
He'll see you through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is for us, who can be against us? You know, we've got, he's given these texts and these readings to strengthen us in these last days because he knows we're going to go through, it's not going to be a good time for us, but if we stay close to Christ, we will uh, gain the victory. Any more thoughts, mm -hmm. anyone? Yes, um, thank you, Sister Dion, for a timely message. Um, it just reminds me of, I uh, think it's a sermon I heard from Randy Skeet, yes, where you are saying, make a conscious um, pronouncement before you get out of bed to choose to, to choose Christ, um, to choose right, to choose God, and uh, and and then and ask for the Holy Spirit to help you to leave the choices that you make. So it's it's actually making the choices that are about the kingdom above against making choices for things of this world, knowing that we are more attracted to the things of this world because of our fleshy natures. Thank you so much. Yes, it's all about choices. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And then Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's got to be for each one of us. Any more thoughts, anyone? There's so many examples in the Bible where when you can see the difference. When, when David was close to Christ, you know, he didn't do the things he did. You know, all these women and everything. But when he wandered away from Christ, um, they had these women and everything, you know, and same with Solomon. You know, Solomon, he, 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 he <laughs> what a life he had. I just don't know how he found time to do anything with all these women. But um, he, he came right in the end. He, he said all his vanity and vexation of spirit and um, everything, that, you know, that um, Christ um, wants us to be the need to be. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that, you know, you know, as Daniel purposed in his heart, you know, that he will need, not eat of the king's meat. You know, it's it's something that we individual Christians, we have to purpose in our heart that we want to do the good. We want to follow after righteousness, you know. And as the sister said in the morning, you know, she said, um, Randy Skeet had, had mentioned it. I, well, I didn't listen to the sermon, but, you know, when the first thing we ought to do in the morning, if we if we say we, are, we belong to Christ, the first thing we do is fall on our knees and give him, you know, give him our everything and he will work out his will in us, you know? And so it's just so wonderful that we have Jesus on, on our side. Actually, I wanted to add more to it, but you know, you can only do so much, but you know, Jesus, as we all know, he is so good. He is working out things for us. If only we will just, you know, give ourselves to him. He's so wonderful. Yes, that's so true. We must purpose in our heart before things happen, what we're going to do. Mm, it's no good making a, uh, trying to make a decision when you're right in the suit. You have to you have to have that decision made before, and then God will give you strength to go through with it and uh, do the right thing. Any more thoughts, anyone? I think we're really blessed with the messages on these platforms, you know, because many people don't get it in the church. Mm, you know, they they get. To, sermons that make you feel comfortable in sin mm. but you know we need uh we need to not feel comfortable with sin we need uh, messages to prepare us for what's coming on this earth that's very very true mm. any closing thoughts anyone We'd like to thank Sister Dion for that timely message. It's um, uh, certainly food for thought that we need to walk with Christ. Walk with Jesus every day And in his promise to guide you all the way 
Walk with Jesus firm and true and you will see. Walk with Jesus and you'll be free. Walk with Jesus and you'll be free. Amen. That's what we have to do, walk with Jesus every day. Who would like to close this section with prayer, please? I want to. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Jesus who died for us on the little cross, and the Holy Spirit pleading for us, just want to thank you, to praise you, to make it possible for us to come to hear this word while we have the sound mind. I want to thank you because there is no other name on this earth which can save us. Thank you for using Sister Dion for this timely message. May you continue to bless her and the family with word, wisdom, knowledge, and power and understanding of the middle cross. I just want to thank you because we need to wake up our own salvation. Sometimes we sin knowing, you know, this is not right, but we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. We need to die to sin and do good according to the righteousness given by Jesus Christ to all of us, free without any insurance. This righteousness is free. I want to pray. May you bless eight of us. We heard this. Let's not harden our heart. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you for the prayer, prayer. Sister Mugabe. Just going to share the screen. Who'd like to pray for praise? Thanks. I will. And the text is Isaiah 25, verse 1. Who'd like to pray for confession of sin? I will. Thank you. And the text is Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. Who would like to pray for the Holy Spirit? I will. Thank you. And the text is Romans 15, verse 13. Oh, one yeah, it's all yeah, one of the chores, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd like to pray for prayer retreat ministries? Prayer retreat ministries, anyone? I'll pray for prayer retreat ministries then. Mark 16, 15. So we'll have a silent prayer that we write with God, then we'll ask um, praise and thanks to start, uh, Sister Mugabe. I think it was Sister Mugabe, I can't remember. Yeah, Sister Dion. Sister, Sister Dion. Arlene. Yeah, Sister Arlene Linda, did you say Isaiah 21, verse 1? Isaiah, Isaiah 25, verse 1. 25, thank you so much.
Amen. Amen. Our reading is coming from Isaiah 25, verse 1. And it reads, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you've given us this day. This day is one day nearer to thy coming. We thank you for the wonderful things that you do for us. We thank you that you protect us. We thank you that you're long suffering. We thank you that you're good and kind. We thank you for all things. We thank you that you have, you know, of all your handiwork, we thank you that we've got eyes to see and we have our, we have our beings and we can still praise you and we're not in the grave yet. Lord, thank you for all that you do. We honor you and we praise you. The angels bow down and they say, holy, holy, Lord God almighty, you deserve the praise for there is none like you. We exalt you, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, for there is none like you. You are the great I am. We praise you, Lord, for you are so good to us. You've taken us out of darkness into a marvelous light. We praise you, we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for coming to this world to claim us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you did for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the many victory that you have fought for us. And because you have fought these victories for us, we can overcome through you, not of ourselves. It is because of you. All power belongs to you. You are great and wonderful. You're omnipresent. You see the day and the day and the night you can see through everything. You can see around the corner. There is nothing that you will not do for your children. You love us, Lord. You have even put your our names on the palm of your hand. Thank you, you Lord, for loving us, Lord. We don't deserve it, but Lord, because of your love that we cannot understand, you love us and we praise you and we honor you and we worship you and we thank you for every single thing that you do for each and every one of us. We praise and honor your holy name. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Dear gracious, oh, read the scripture reading first. Uh, Matthew 6. And um, I think it's uh, 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father in the father forgive your trespasses. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer as sisters of the most precious faith. Father, we we come acknowledging no other God but you. And Father, we recognize that only as we humble ourselves before you and seek forgiveness and cleansing that we can be made right with you. We realize, dear Lord, that sin separates us from you. And we realize, Lord, that it ties us to the things of this world. But Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. He is our only savior. He is our high priest. We have every confidence in the work that he can do for us. And so we bring it to you and confess our sins, asking, uh, that they may be forgiven in and through the blood that he shed for us on Calvary. Dear Father, we recognize that we sin in thought, word, and deed. We realize, dear Lord, that we are in complete need of forgiveness and cleansing. And then of the infilling of your Holy Spirit to help us to lead a sanctified life, as we heard in our reading earlier by our sister. Father, we, we recognize no saviour but Jesus. And we come throwing ourselves on your mercy and on your grace, seeking, Lord, uh, that you would reconcile us to yourself. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you will go with us, that you would give us keen spiritual eyesight, that we can see and recognize the wrong in our lives, and that by your grace we will seek to rectify 
Only in your strength, Lord, are we able to do this. Father, we pray not just for ourselves, but we pray for our loved ones. Those, Lord, who do not know you, those who have not committed themselves to you, Lord, we ask you to break down the barriers that have been erected between them and you. We ask you to remove, dear Father, their ignorance. We ask you to remove their indifference. We ask you to crush uh, their opposition and resistance to you and their open rebellion. Lord, we pray that you will smash through these barriers of selfishness and pride and wickedness. So, dear Lord, we ask you to then create within them a desire to seek after you, to know you, to love you and serve you, that they may be saved. And we pray also for your church, Lord, we realise that much is going on of which you are unhappy, which is unacceptable for we know that the church of Laodicea is, is cold, it's lukewarm, and that it's, uh, um, um, it's not following your word as we should, as we've had it revealed to us, Lord, we pray that you would draw us back to your word of truth that it may be practiced in our lives by your assistance, by the help of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will help us to be the best witnesses we can be for you. And so, dear Father, as we throw ourselves on your mercy, we praise and thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them. For you have indeed promised that before we pray that you answer our prayers, you are so loving and gracious. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer, which is offered in and through Jesus, our only advocate. Amen. 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 Continuing in prayer for the Holy Spirit, I read Romans 15, verse 13. Now, God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us continue in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord be thy name, may your kingdom come. And may your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this hour, this hour of prayer. And thank you for the prayer of confession of sins and, and praise and thanksgiving, all of which I am in agreement with. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the one who promised us our Lord when, on his way to heaven. He was going to come and help us to call to remembrance what we have, what he has, what he has taught us and to put us and keep us on the path of righteousness. And thank you that he is amongst us as we are gathered here, my sisters and brothers and I, because you promise uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, they are able to modest. Father, the hungering and thirsting that is in our hearts, that brings us to this platform, morning, afternoon and evening and that puts us in your scriptures and that sends us to the house of worship on Sabbath and in any other day is because the spirit is pricking our hearts and so I want to thank you that you have made all the provision that we need in order for our salvation to be to be uh, finished and that the Holy Spirit is moving in our hearts to search the scriptures and to look to to you and in your word and every everywhere we can Lord thank you that you have made provision for us to be able to read your word and to Hear it with our with with our ears, and it is you've made you've provided for it where 
the enemy thought to thwart it in 2020. Now it is we raised up these platforms where the reach is even further than what uh, what was before the before the the COVID pandemic started. Thank you, Father, that you love us this much, that your spirit is here to guide us and to convict us of, of sin. May he continue I invite him, Father, to abide in our hearts, we invite him, and to remind us of what it is that you, you have put us, and not to give us peace until we have yielded all our wills to you. May he continue to hover over this platform and stay in the hearts of your people that come looking for you um, morning, afternoon, and evening. And Father, may he remind us that our sanctification is not the only thing that you desire from us. We are here in order to serve you and also to be serving others in, in, in that it is through the urging of the Holy Spirit. May we not, may we not um, uh, uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit or resist Him when He speaks to us in a in in the small still way. But he, may He give us hearing aids to to hear Him when He speaks. I self to see when you are standing at the door, calling sinner come home. Thank you, Father that you are loving and forbearing, that you suffer none to be lost. We ask for the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our churches, in our families, and in our communities, to continue to be the force that drives people's lives and, and bring the love of Christ within us and work as, um, work with character transformation on on our car on character transformation may it be from within and not and not be our own cloak of right, righteousness that we put on but that the spirit puts on the Christ righteousness on us and help us to prepare for the coming of our lord that when the day comes we we'll all be saying here is our lord whom we have been waiting for. Thank you for the time that you have afforded us to come together this afternoon. And when we go, may the may the Spirit be help us to meditate on what we have what we have heard this afternoon and and pass it on to others. But most importantly, it must start the work of sanctification. Continue the work of sanctification within ourselves so that we may be fit citizens for the kingdom of heaven and proper messengers for our king. This is my prayer in the precious name, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. 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 Mark, verse 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you this, this afternoon to pray for um, prayer retreat ministries. We thank you for this ministry and we know that it's doing a lot of work to bring the present truth to those who need to hear it. And so we ask that you'll bless it, open doors and avenues that it can go forward. We pray that you'll bless the forthcoming retreat in December. Um, uh, it's heavenly between the, 60, the 20th and the 26th. And we pray that you'll bless the speakers, Elder Kudzai, who's a founder member of um, this fat pair retreat, and also um, Chris, Elder Chris Hudson too. We ask that you grant them traveling mercies and that you'll be with them and that the Holy Spirit will be present. We pray that you bless all the programs that, that are on and all those who are running the ministry and that you're blessed, lead and guide in all things. This we ask in the worthy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. we'll stop the recording now. It's time for prayer requests and whatever the Lord lays on your heart. <laughs> 